At J.X. home, the news of the arrival of the Satan-class threat reaches his dad. So they sent a Satan-class threat for this? J.X. dad questions. His mom replies, they can't afford any more delays. Nineteen years have already passed, and the previous method isn't working. This is the best decision. Our mission wasn't to hurt J. A. Ick. What if something happens to J. A. Ick because of this? His dad asks, while keeping his hand on his pretending wife's shoulder. His wife gets angry as she grabs and starts to bend one of his fingers. She reminds him that J. Ick was just a ward they were looking after for the mission. So he must approach this with unnecessary human sentimentality, because the moment he starts thinking about affection and familial love, his resolve will weaken. After that, J.X. dad pulls back his finger and both of them start to shout. What if J.I.K. overhears all of this? His dad shouts. At that moment, J.I.K. enters. Just now, what do you mean by that? He questions while being extremely puzzled about the current situation. At the same time, Hell's sixth-class Demon Legion destroyer of stage Mercurochrome makes his entry into the world of the living. It's been a while since he has felt the outside air. Grrr, I'm overflowing with power. This is what being alive feels like, he shouts. According to him, this place is like heaven, which he wants to smash to stir up chaos, but he suddenly hears a voice in his head telling him that, It's too soon, Mercurochrome. Your special pardon is only applied to missions of subduing the Apex Hybrid and bringing him back to the awakened stage. If you meet that condition, you can unleash as much destruction as you like. After hearing this, he says that typical demons always tend to attack conditions, but he decides to take it as a condition he could handle. He says that he will start with the boy who will become the Apex Hybrid fast, and he wants to destroy him because they never said to bring that boy alive. Oh, I, big fella, don't block the road, move. Do you own the road or something? Don't jaywalk. A person driving a car in the road shouts at Mercurochrome. Mercurochrome gets angry and starts to accumulate energy at his spear to unleash an attack. He says that anyone who will stand in his way will be smashed to bits as he swings his spears. Additionally, he says that he doesn't believe in any so-called legends, as legends tend to be exaggerated and inflated, and especially since J. Ick is a novice yet to awaken, he assumes that he will easily smash it, and with this, Mercurochrome wants to rewrite the legend by saying the legend was wrong. At J. Ick's home, are you saying that I'm not your real child? He asks, while making a confusing yet sad expression. Both of his parents try to dodge the questions by making some excuses. J. Ick's mom tells him that he must have heard it wrong, since his mom was summarizing the drama she watched yesterday. Tell me, Dad! J. Ick shouts in frustration. His dad lies on the ground, asking for forgiveness. So, Dad is not my biological father? And Mom, she's not my real mother either? He asks sadly. Both of his parents realize that lying won't work on this kid now. J. Ick, while releasing his aura, says to them to tell him everything, how he was born and even how all of this happened. His mom starts to explain that, a very long time ago, there was a great war between heaven and hell. The war, sparked by differing ideologies, raged on for a millennium. This millennium-long war eventually lost its purpose, turning into a meaningless fight with unending sacrifices, bestowing nothing but destruction and despair upon both heaven and hell. The Angels and Demons exhausted from the continuous strife, finally devised a solution to conclude the war. They chose a representative from each side to engage in a one-on-one -on -one duel, deciding the outcome of the war and agreeing to accept the result gracefully. Isn't this too much? Can't you summarize it in about five lines? What does my birth have to do with this? Jayik asks. His mom tells him to hold on because the main story is just getting started.
The chosen representatives were the archangel Seraphim for the angels and the great demon Baal for the demons, keeping everything from the thousand-year war at stake the death match started. That was the renowned duel of the Valhalla Canyon. How dare you casually mention the name of the archangel? Is Seraphim your friend? Jayek's dad asks while interrupting the flow of the story. Jayek grabs his father's mouth while telling him not to intervene. At that battle, Seraph, is this our first time going head to head? How about a cup of coffee before we fight? The great demon Ball asked as he tried to tease Seraphim. Seraphim, on the contrary, says that she will purify his foul mouth with the power of light, and, and thus, their battle commenced with the pride of angels and demons on the line. Their strife persisted, with no one showing signs of defeat. There seemed to be no end in sight, that's how they ended up fighting for another thousand years. Both of them realized that the fight which was started in order to end the war is increased because they have expended the battles for a thousand years. Seraphim said that at this rate, they both will end up dying. The demon Baal agrees with her and suggests that they should avoid unnecessary exhaustion, so they both decided to settle the battle with their ultimate moves. The angel used the power of compassion. She says that she will transcend everything through love. On the other hand, the demon Baal used the power of greed, the strength to humble oneself before what one desires. The angel's attack was driven by goodwill, while the demon's attack was driven by malice. The collision shook that area, and in that moment, something unthinkable occurred. From compassion, the calm fell away and from greed, the gree fell away. Something no one could have predicted, the emotion of love and passion arose. The two words from the ultimate techniques surprisingly harmonized with each other. Both the enemies started to have feelings for each other, a feeling that they could never have experienced until now. Even the angels and demons observing the battle began to question their own sight. We've been battling all this while, haven't we, Baal? Seraphim asks as she gets close to Baal while blushing. Baal replies, saying, Indeed, but now it seems to be a time for them to build something. It was destined to unfold this way from the start. One of the angels tells them to keep their distance from each other, while two of the demons shout at the angel to stop the music he is playing. Despite everyone's disapproval, they couldn't halt their intense passion as both of their lips touched each other. They forgot everything about the world for that moment. All the angels and the devils tried to stop them, but they couldn't. They started doing this and that, and in the end, they started doing that. Stop! How far are you planning to narrate this story? J. Ick is still underage, his dad shouts while blocking J. A. Ick's ear. His mom replies that he is already 19, so it's foolish to remain ignorant. Additionally, she says that if they keep things hushed, like this, kids may end up with misconceptions. Finally, J.A.E. got to know the secret of his birth, but he is still quite puzzled. As he tries to escape that area, his dad stops him saying that there's more to the secret. In the meantime, the previously seen trio appears in front of Mercurochrome. Don't stand in my way, Mercuro Chrome shouts. He again repeats himself, but the boss of the group tries to act cool. Do you think I would listen to that? The short man replies. Hey there, big guy, would you mind stepping aside? Don't you know who my big brother is, and yet you still dare block the way? Two of the boys ask. His big brother, who is actually the little one in size, tells them to stop as it seems that the big guy is new around here, so he suggests to give the guy some guidance. Mercurochrome. Without lingering, punches the two in front, which creates a huge impact as they fly away, stirring up the wind. Don't stand in my way, Mercurochrome repeats himself. The little guy gets angry as he asks that since a man should have some pride, whether it is all right if he stands beside Mercurochrome. Mercurochrome agrees that standing beside him is all right. Why, imp, how do I get to happy apartments? He asks. 
The short guy replies that they can get there by taking a turn down this alley while pointing at the alley. After hearing this, Mercurochrome takes out his spear and smashes the building. He says that in his books there's no such thing as taking turns. For him, it is always straightforward. He says that if there is no road, then he will just build one because that is the way of the strong. For the first time, the short guy named Ushi Jim saw what true strength is, and since he thinks of him as a little demon, he intends to follow the big and strong. He is a man who is attracted to strength, because he is a man who gives credit where credit is due. He again stands in front of Mercurochrome. Mercurochrome again warns him not to stand here. Ushi Jim bows down in front of Mercurochrome. Hello, I will be your guide. Is it okay if I stand below you? He asks. The demon replies that below is fine. Ushi Jim, who has now become a GPS, tells the demon to go straight for 500 meters. At JX home, he asks whether there is still more to the story that he doesn't know of. His mom replies that they haven't told Jay Ick why he is so important and why is he considered significant just by being born yet. His dad volunteers to explain it properly so that Jay Ick can understand. He starts to explain by saying that news about a child born between Seraphim and Baal spread like wildfire in both heaven and hell. It stirred up thoughts of the ultimate Abraxas legend that was only passed down in ancient prophecies. Does the legendary, supremely powerful Apex hybrid truly exist? Will a human at the age of 19 truly undergo an initial awakening and afterward achieve an unbeatable Apex hybrid status after the Grand Awakening? If so, will this be on the side of the angels or the demons? The supremely powerful Apex Hybrid is just a legend inscribed in ancient texts. Where is the guarantee that he will indeed become an Apex Hybrid? Countless questions like these arose. The demons tried to take the child by saying that as the angels didn't believe the legend of the Apex Hybrid, they are not entitled to that power. The angels blamed the demons for talking nonsense and disagreed with their judgment. The angels denied it. By saying that as the child was born through the power of love, the angels should be the one taking care of him. The demons replied that the child is a product of passion, something unattainable by love alone. So the child will undoubtedly grow into a manifestation of desire and will along with the demons. While sharing this story, both of his parents, one who is an angel and the other who is a demon, starts to argue with each other in the name of heaven and hell. J. Ick says that he had enough of the theatrics, so he tells them to cut to the chase. The demons suggested creating a contract, as an angel's words can't be trusted, and the angels agreed as they said that contracts don't lie demons. The contract was signed, and according to it, angels and demons will each assign a guardian to oversee and facilitate the child's growth. Until the child reaches the age of 19, any interference from angels and demons other than the guardians is prohibited. And so, leaving J. Ick behind, a contract was drafted for the first time in the history of angels and demons. His mom is the guardian specified in the contract from the demon's side, and his dad is the guardian from the angel's side, and both of them raised J. Ick on their behalf. J. Ick finally understands that everything was a lie, and realizes why Hanael and Scalpel appeared out of nowhere in his life. He shouts angrily that all his life up to this point was nothing but a lie. The angel guardian gets behind the demon's back. He tells Jaik not to be angry. The demon guardian replies that regardless, there's nothing they can do. And once Mercurochrome arrives, all of this will be over. At the same time, Ushi is leading Mercurochrome to the correct destination. He informs that they'll reach their destination as soon as they cross this crosswalk. Mercurochrome replies that the mention of crossing reminds him of his time in hell, when he had to cross the Stex River with nothing but his bare body. From that moment on, he had feared nothing. 
As Mercurochrome is walking the crossroad, a bus comes near and is about to hit him. He turns the bus upside down and says that it only tickled. Ushi witnesses as he falls in love with Mercurochrome's seemingly omnipotent power. Mercurochrome tells Ushi to lead the way. In the next moment, Hanael notices the Satan-class demon up from the sky. She says that she can't believe that demons actually sent a Satan-class demon, but it's expected from the low lives like the demons. Scalpel agrees with Hanael. He says that it's a bit too much, and the demons also requested reinforcements without even consulting him. But it's a pretty solid strategy, so Scalpel can't really object. He figured out that the demons are launching a psychological attack on Jay Ick from the inside, and then Satan comes in to finish the job in one fell swoop. You call yourself a guardian? Where in the world have you been till now? And how do you plan to protect J. Ek then? He asks Hanael. He says that J. Ek has been deeply wounded in his heart, and soon his body will be severely injured as well. At J. Ek's home, anger is taking over him because now he knows the truth, that in the end he was treated not as a person, but a mere object. Mercurochrome, standing right outside Jayik's apartment, feels the wave of evil triggered by the sense of anger from a specific flat. He gets happy, pats Ushi's head, and says that he will make Ushi his subordinate when this mission is complete after gaining his freedom. He shouts that they will wreak havoc on this human world together as he jumps upward. At that moment, Hanael comes flying, and in order to black the demon, she uses Terra Shield, but it is ineffective as Mercurochrome easily shatters it into pieces. He says that the likes of him can't be stopped by a mere guardian angel. Hanel falls on the ground as she can't keep up her shield any longer. The demon breaks into J. Ick's home. He laughs at J. Ick as he says that he feels sorry for J. Ick to have such a small body and he also feels sorry to hit a small person. He tells Jay Ick to watch as he creates, a legend by taking down this apex hybrid in one fell swoop. What are you laughing at? Jay Ick asks as he rushes to punch the Satan-class demon. Mercurochrome. Feels that Jay Ick's hands are tiny, yet powerful enough, as he falls on the ground. Jay Ick forgot what he was about to say and he blames Mercurochrome for it. Previously, when Mercurochrome jumped, Ushi Jim thought that the summer of his life has arrived marking the time when he finally met a wonderful man. It felt like a blessing, a treasure he discovered in the innocence of youthful summer. It was as if he had found an unbreakable diamond, but after seeing Mercurochrome falling in just one punch, he turns his back on Mercurochrome, saying that he prefers winter more than summer. The Guardian feels like he can't take it anymore and tries to run away, but Jay Eek starts to stop him by releasing a green aura. The Guardian Angel says that he has done everything he could do and his mission is now complete. The Guardian Demon tells Jay Eek to come back to his senses. Both of them then start to attack Jay Eek by jumping. The Guardian Angel says that, still, they do have affection for Jay Eek. After all, they're the ones who raised him. The guardian demon asks whether J. Eek will disintegrate them, because they're just servants, a servant assigned to take care of him until he turns 19. J. Eek's dad shouts at his mom while telling her not to stir things up further. J. Eek, do you remember when dad used to give you piggyback rides? His dad asks while sweating and sheds tears when he says that he worked hard regardless as if J. Ick were his real child. His mom, on the other hand, blames his dad for adding the fuel in the fire, and like this, they start to quarrel with each other, and things reach to divorce, and both of them decide to sign the divorce paper. J. Ick shouts that he wants to see no one fighting or quarreling in front of him. Both the guardians say sorry to J. Ick. In the meantime, Scalpel and Henael were seeing all the incidents from the window. Scalpel notices that the awakening level has spiked again. He sees that J. Ek is already manipulating the awakening level as he pleases. Scalpel guesses that's a basic skill for the Apex hybrid. 
Henael says that more importantly, things have gotten out of hand and there are many witnesses. The people in that area are wondering whether anyone died because they saw that someone was falling, and some of them also considered calling the police. Henael realizes that they can't let people discover their true identities, including J. X. They need to restore the city and erase people's memories. Scalpel wishes her good luck on that. He says that he is more of a destroyer than a restorer. Henniel gets really pissed as she kicks Scalpel and orders him to clean up the trash. Henniel doesn't understand why she always has to clean up the mess that these demons recklessly create. To restore a situation of this magnitude, even if she uses all her energy, it might not be enough. But she has to at least try, because in her opinion, even if her body breaks, angels have to fulfill their duties. She starts to use the power of the Great Restoration to restore the city completely. On the contrary, Scalpil is clearing up the trash, otherwise known as the Satan-class demon. He criticizes the angel for being foolish because Henael is using her power to erase the memory of the people who will eventually age and die. In his perspective, why should someone put so much effort into erasing the memories of mere mortals? He then opens up a portal to send Mercurochrome to hell and tells him to say hi to Lucifer on his behalf. After some time, the restoration was done and the cracks were all gone, and the people also started forgetting their memories of this incident and some of the people think of it as a nightmare. All these restoration and erasing the memories took a huge troll of Hanile's body as she starts to fall from the shy, but Scalpel catches her in the perfect time. Are you into self-harm scams or something? He asks Henael, who is currently fainting due to exhaustion. He says that Henael is a tiresome woman, who is fainting and in this state, if he let her fall into hell, he will have one less rival. He laughs as he says that Henael might have forgotten that he is a demon as she dared to faint in front of him. He says that it is the end for her, while throwing her into hell. At J. Ick's home, he picks up the family photo and wonders, how has he lived until now, and not noticed even once that all of these photos were fake. The piggyback rides, the amusement park, the picnics, the hot spring trips, even the Halloween parties, everything until now was a lie he cries as he processes the hardcore truth of his life in his mind. Did you really have to deceive me like that, with every detail so meticulously planned? He asks his pretend parents while crying. He was feeling anger yet sadness at the same time. The demon guardian replies that they had no other option but to do it, because the moment they were found out, it would have been the end of their lives. Ye Ik thinks that he never doubted, not even once. The fact that they weren't his real parents, and it was not just him, but no one around him even noticed. At that moment, he realizes that if nobody noticed including him, it can only mean one thing. That means they've raised me well, right? He thinks deeply in his mind. He starts to walk towards the guardians and holds both of their hands. He says thanks for raising him well. He states that, the fact that no one has noticed or thought it was strange until now means that they raised him as well as any other parents. So J. Ick suggests that they should continue being his mom and dad. After hearing this, both of them start to shout. They say that there is no need for that, because J. Ick grew up on his own without being properly raised, and they also state that there are just contracted servants who simply worked hard, and they couldn't possibly do anything that would weigh on their conscience in their angelic and demonic life. They say that they don't want to work overtime and tell J. Ick to forget all the past memories. J. Ick grabs their hands tightly. He tells them that from now on, they will be staying here, with him. Both of them feel the pain in their hands. J. Ick gets angry as he bites his tongue and tells them again to just keep on being his parents, as they have been because he doesn't want to break up this family. His mom says that it's hurting while grabbing his father's hair due to the pain. At hell, a demon comes to free a prisoner. 
The prisoner says that it's his turn now. He says that he will commence his attack, and it will be a counterattack, so wishes the opponent to be extra careful. Both the demon and the prisoner are having a chat. The demon tells the prisoner to not waste his talent and suggests him to work in hell. Are you trying to corrupt me? The prisoner asks. He checks the level of his corruption using a thing like a compass. He sees that the color is still blue, and once it turns red, he will lose all of his angel qualifications. The prisoner is also known as the 3TN Order Archangel, Azrasel, who is on the verge of corruption. The demon who is Hell's strategic headquarters negotiator named Negojom offers Azrasel a position of strategic deputy commander of Hell's army. Additionally, he says that there are 5,000 miscellaneous mobs attached below it, and if Azrasel agrees to come to Hell now, he'll appoint Azrasel right away. After hearing the offer, Azrasel tells Negojom to prepare another 5,000 minions. Nagojom wants to negotiate, but Azrasel refuses by saying that he is different from other angels and he will not move unless there's a profit to make. He says that if he is going to fall from grace, it should be under good conditions, and once he becomes a demon, even if he falls, there's nowhere lower for him to go. Moreover, he says that he will sign the contract the moment he falls from grace and when the thousand minions are prepared as proposed. Lastly, he says that as an angel, he still has duties left which he needs to complete and leaves that area. After some time, as he walks in hell, he says that every time he comes to hell, it's always a mess, although a little bit of remodeling would do this place wonders. He tells them to install some street lights at least, and also, the strong sulfur smell is unbearable, according to him. It's a complete disaster. While walking, he comes across two demons. The demons notice that it's an angel and start to attack him. Azrasel deals with them swiftly. He sighs as he says that these demons don't even recognize the person who will serve hell later. He kicks one of the demons backwards and another one upwards. He again kicks the small demon whom he threw upwards a moment ago. He notices that there's even a drunkard collapsed on the ground. He points out that anyone can see that it's a true hell here. At that moment, he saw an angel falling from the sky, and that angel was none other than Henael. He thinks that Henael might be a fallen angel, but he wonders what could have gone wrong for an angel to fall into hell. He then notices that this angel is the Apex Hybrid's appointed guardian angel. Does landing here mean they failed their mission? Does that mean I, who was appointed next, have a high chance of being summoned? He thinks deeply. In the next scene, we see Valhalla Canyon, a nearby small valley. In the past, Ninth Order Angel Civil Servant Aesthetic Sephacross was waiting in the waiting room for aspiring actors. Hello? Is this the waiting room for aspiring actors? Hell's Seventh Class. Demon Servant Demon Intern Demoniac asks. Both of them got shocked to see each other as an angel and a demon. At the time, an announcement was made. The judge congratulated both of them on passing the document review. He said that from now on, they will have to go to the human world and act as a parent until the child grows up. The human world. Can we put on a proper performance in the human world where mortals are crawling around? Demoniac questioned. Sephacruz agrees by saying that he wants to become a comedy actor, not a tragedy one. The person told them to listen to the end. He said that if they act for just 19 years, both of them will be brought back to heaven and hell, and after completing the mission, they will have the qualifications of regular angels and demons, not low-level demons and low-level angels. Moreover, depending on their acting skills, they will even receive additional points that will put them ahead of others in future promotions. Alas, both of them agreed in a heartbeat, and this is how they volunteered for the mission, but it turned out to be an extreme job. Jay Ick looks at the news and laughs and says that it's so enjoyable to have a meal together as a family. Sephacross tries to run away by making an excuse to bring water for his thirsty son. Jay Ick throws a chair at the wall in order to scare Sephacross. He says that he doesn't want water. 
Demoniac tells Sephacross to stay still and not to cause any trouble. Sephacross says that his body is floating anyway, so he has no choice but to stay still. He says that feels good as it's comfortable when J. Ack is being considerate of his dad again. J. Ick compliments his mom for making the fish cake as a side dish, which is actually really delicious. Demoniac replies that she actually ordered it, and she can order it again if he wants. He says that he didn't clean his room today, so he tells his mom to please scold him by saying that the one who creates the mess should be the one to clean it up. His proxy mom replies that she wouldn't dare to scold an apex hybrid who is making a mess. She tells him that he can make a mess as freely as he wishes. After hearing this, J. Ick gets angry. He says that he wants to keep their family happy and tells them to cooperate a bit. After dinner, both the proxy parents are washing the plates. Demoniac says that the demon's plan failed because J. Ick even managed to take down Mercurochrome in one shot. Sephicross tells her not to worry because this time, he secretly asked heaven for help. What kind of help can we get when even someone at Satan's level is being taken down in one shot? She asks. Then, she sees a devilish expression coming out from an angel. At the same time, in heaven, Azrasel carried Henael to heaven. What's happening? Am I dead? Why am I in heaven? Henael asks as she regains her senses. Azrasel replies that it's natural for an angel to come to heaven, and as Hanael used up all of her powers because of a human, he regards her as very kind, yet a bit lacking. Hanael recognizes him as the first order archangel named Ariel. Azrasel lies that he is not Ariel, and Ariel is his twin brother. At that moment, a higher up angel announces from the sky that Ariel is no longer a first order archangel. He has become a third-order fallen angel Azrasel. Originally a first-order archangel, but demoted to third order due to internal corruption because he almost lost his archangel status, but was allowed to retain his angelic rank as a matter of courtesy. The higher-up angel says that lately, he has been hearing strange rumors about Azrasel. There's information that he is league with hell. Azrasel replies that he was only there a few times for covert operations. Are you an archangel, collecting humans' wishes and selling them to demons? Azrasel replies that it's just like being a white hat hacker. By the way, did you summon me to talk about this? He questions. The angel says that, as of now, Azrasel will descend to the human world to assist in the awakening of the apex hybrid and bring them to heaven. Azrasel says that he had a hunch, but he didn't expect this mission to come to him. Henael asks the angel for the reason to send Azrasel because this mission was supposedly hers. The angel replies that Henael has failed her mission. As a result, from this moment on, she is to return to heaven and be confined in a special prison. A special prison, Henael repeats. In the human world, J. Ick is walking on the street while thinking that he has protected his family, and now he is truly going to live a completely ordinary life, as if nothing ever happened. He then sees that the sky is changing color. Huh? What is this? What is happening to the sky? He wonders and has a strange, ominous feeling about it. It's like what he witnessed previously, and he has a hunch that there's going to be another transfer student. After that, we can see the fallen angel Azrasel gets admitted to Jayik's school. He gets in the classroom and introduces him to everyone. He tells all the students that they can freely call his Azra. After the introduction section is over, Azrasel point his finger to the seat behind Jayik and tells that from today he will sit there. Jayik, seeing this new transfer student and he feels very ominous feeling. Azrasel then goes to his seat, and before sitting down, he says hello to J. A. Eek, and directly asked if he is the Apex Hybrid. Hearing this scalpel gives an angry looks, and asked Azrasel that, who told him to sit here? Azrasel smiles and replies that he couldn't care less about a demon who's lost his touch. He also says that he is here because of this friend of his. 
J. Ick then turns back and asked Azracel about Henael. Ah, are you talking about that poor guardian? Azracel replies. Scalpel intervenes and tells that he has torn Henael into pieces and sent her off to hell, and from now on they won't be seeing her face again. Torn to pieces? I found her passed out after her fall to hell and brought her back to heaven. She's likely detained in heaven's special prison by now, Azracel says. After that, we can see that Henael is currently staying in the Heaven's Paradise special prison. She is resting on a lounger beside a swimming pool. She feels bored as she has nothing to do. At that time, a bald waiter comes and serves her a orange drink. She has been sentenced to live here for 20 years, and also she has to eat and drink continuously. She then looks at the girls in the pool and pities them for being sentenced to do this for 30 years. She then starts to drink and thinks that how long she has to be locked up here. Now back to the classroom, the teacher is about to start the class. But before starting, he warns the students that if any phone rings during class, it will be confiscated with no exceptions. At the back, we can see Azracel is mocking Scalpel for tells lies whenever he opens his mouth. Scalpel feels annoyed as he didn't expect that Henael will meet Azracel so soon. J. Ick seems sad after hearing this, as he and Henael was getting closer. After a while, Scalpel thinks something he asked Azracel that, how can he go to hell as angels don't go there? Azracel replies that he occasionally goes there for business purposes. Scalpel gets shocked. Hearing this, so he asked Azracel that if he is a fallen angel. Hearing this, Azracel gets a bit nervous. He tells Scalpel that he hasn't fallen yet. He then takes a gauge meter from his pocket and feels relief, seeing that the meter is still in blue. Scalpel starts to feel weird, as an even strange guy has come. Azracel then asked Scalpel that if J. Ike is really the apex hybrid as he looks like an ordinary human. Scalpel replies that J. A. I. K. is human, but not as naive as he might think. While the two of them are talking, J. A. Ike feels disturbed, so he turns around and tells them to keep quiet, as they are loud so everyone will hear them. The two of them ignores J. Ike and continues their talk. Scalpel tells Azracel that J. Ike is astoundingly powerful, and he can even control his strength at will. Azracel tells that he wants to test J. Ike's skill, and saying this, he starts to take out the gun that is on his leg. How do you plan to test him? He crushed the destroyer of hell, Mercurochrome, in a single punch. No matter how much of an archangel you are, you might find it tough to go against him. Scalpel tells this to Azracel. Azracel points the gun at J.I.K. Scalpel gets scared and tells him to hold on as this is a bit too much. At that time, J.I.K. turns around and tells them to stop their mouth. As J.I.K. turns, Azracel fires the gun. Due to the huge sound, everyone in the class looks at them. As the gun fires, J. Ike stops the bullet with his hand and gets angry and tell them that they are so loud that it's disturbing his studies. Seeing this, both Scalpel and Azracel get shocked. The sound also grabs the teacher's attention, but he thinks that it is a phone ringtone, so tells the class to bring the phone to him. Outside the classroom, we can see two students are talking in the hallway. The healthy guy tells Tay that he has been acting weird this days. Tay gets angry and says that what is he saying? The healthy tells Tay that he has been acting like best friends with Jay. Ick after he beat him up. After that, the healthy pads Tay's head tells that he never knew that he has been hiding such a soft side of his. Tay tells him to cut it out. He then thinks of Jay Ick and says that he is a good kid. Hearing this, the healthy gets angry and starts to shout at Tay. Azracel hears them talking and he goes towards Fatty and wraps his arm around his shoulder and says, Who's talking about demotion here? And what's this about falling from grace? It seems we have a friend here who's a bit of an underdog. Why are you starting a fight with him? Tay ignores Azracel and asks Fatty that what harm did he cause him by becoming friends with Jayik? You can't just meddle in personal disputes. These guys run this school. Their bond is built on mutual respect and loyalty. Scalpel comes and says this. Seeing Scalpel Fatty gets scared, and he tells them that Ty used to torment the school, but now he is acting like a saint. After that, Azracel takes out his blue wings and tells them that he is an angel 
who solves disputes among humans and lends an ear to their troubles. Normally he shouldn't interfere in human conflicts, but would they like to try a forbidden solution today? Tay gets confused and asked for the forbidden solution. After that, Azracel starts to analysis and then research after doing this, he gives the solution, but the solution didn't make any sense to the others. Later, Scalpel tells that they should not interfere with human emotions in a human way. Scalpel then uses his demon whispers on Fatty and provokes him to fight with Tay. Seeing this, Azracel tells Scalpel that the thing he has done now is called manipulation. Scalpel replies, no and says that he merely gave an opportunity for social climbing that was hindered by friendship. Azracel then used his retweet of support magic and provoked Ty to fight Fatty. After that, the two of them starts fighting from Fatty's, and Tay point of view, they are fighting like pros. But Scalpel and Azracel gets bored by seeing this as the fight looks so lame from their point of view. In that time, J.I.K. arrives at the scene, he sees that two people are brawling in the hallway. He goes towards them and grabs both of their shoulder with his both hands. He then rays them in the sky and tells them that if they do this here, they will disturb other people. After saying this to them, he goes to Scalpel and Azracel and shouts at them as because of them, the teacher takes his phone and he has to go through a lot to get it back. After shouting at them, J. Ike goes to the classroom to take his notes. Azracel then tells Scalpel that J. Ike looks like a normal human kid, and when he fired the gun at him, J. Ike didn't show any kind of awakening. Scalpel then tells him that J. Ike's current awakening level is only 50%. And in the end, if he is not fully 100% awakened, both of their missions are doomed to fail. Scalpel also says that he tried various things to increase it, but it wasn't as easy as it seems. As Russell tells that the critical moment usually hits when someone has something precious to protect. I wonder what J. Eck considers most precious. Hearing this, Scalpel tells that recently, J. Eck found out that his parents are fake. But even then, he has chosen to accept them as his real family. After hearing this, Scalpel gets that the weaknesses of J. Ick is his parents. So he suggests Scalpel that what if they target J. Ike's parents? Hearing this, Fatty Tay and Scalpel gets shocked. Azracel now explains Scalpel his plan. Azracel intends to take J. Ike's parents, and if J. Ike notices that his parents are under threat, he will surely come to rescue them, and in this process, if J. Ike's parents gets hurt, and if J. Ike sees this, his awakened powers would explode with unbearable anger. Hearing the plan, Scalpel tells Azracel that messing with J. Ike's family is a bit too much. Why? Didn't you want to hasten the awakening by stirring up the wave of evil more than anyone else? And they're not even his real parents anyway. Azracel gives a deadly look and says this. The other two students hear Azracel's plan and thinks that he is Satan as the plan is really vicious. Scalpel also gets nervous by hearing the plan. He then asked Azracel that who is he, as his tactics is more demonic than a demon, and an angel will never use such demonic tactics. Of course, an angel should never do such a thing. Such despicable tactics are only suitable for demons, as Russell tells this to Scalpel. He further says that he cannot do this job as if he does it his gauge might turn red. So he tells Scalpel to execute this plan and all the credit will belong to him. Scalpel makes an scary face and asked as Russell that if he is trying to give all the hard to him. On the other hand, we can see J. Ick is walking towards his home. While walking, he thinks about Azracel. As J. Ick now has a harmonious family, he wants to take care of them so that no harm comes to them. As J. Ike is walling, two men in black suits stops him and asked help from him. They ask J. Ike to show them the bus. Stop. J. Ike turns around and points his finger and tells them to go in that direction. At that time, one of the men launched an attack at J. A. Ike. J. Ick dodges it easily. The man then jumps backwards and we can see the man has huge and sharp claws. The man then jumps towards J. A. Ike at lightning speed. Seeing this, J. A. Ike 
also takes a fighting stand and he gently taps the man, and the man brust, and Bollock liquid comes out of the man's body. J-A-I-K gets shocked to see that a gentle tap from him explodes the man. Seeing this, the other guy takes off his helmet and throws it at J. J. Ick. Seeing this coming, so he just swings his hand to avoid it. But as the helmet hits his hand, it also explodes. J. Ik get confused to see that the attacks are so weak. Now as the helmet is removed, we can see that the man is not a human, as he has a lizard face. The lizard man starts to shake in fear, as he didn't expect Jai Iki to be so strong. Jai Iki looks at the lizard man and finds his face ugly and says that he is just a typical low-level mob. The tour name of the lizard man man is Zop Mob. This species is a very common lowest-level monsters in hell. The Zop Mob gets so afraid that it starts to run away. The direction in which the Zop Mob run is where J. Ick's house. Seeing this, J. Ick panics and starts to run towards his house. J. Ek rushed to his house and shouts for his parents, but he finds that no one is at home. He then looks around and sees that a note is stick on the fridge. J. A. Ek quickly garbs the note, but the language in which the note was written is unknown for J. A. Ek. As J. A. Ek is looking at the note at that time, a Zop Mob launches a sneak attack on J. A. Ek. As the Zop Mob attacks, J. A. Ek just swings his hand and it hits the Zop Mob's helmet and breaks it. The Zop Mob also explodes, and Black Ink gets on J. A. Ike's hand. J. A. Ike is still unaware of the Zop Mob, and he thinks that it was a mosquito. After that, another Zop Mob holding a sword tries to attack J. Ike, but this time J. Ike notices him, and by using his telekinesis power, he rise the Zop Mob in the sky and tells it to interpret the letter. The Zop Mob then takes the letter and starts to read. Your mom and dad have been kidnapped. If you want to find them, listen carefully to what I am about to say. Hearing this, J. Eek gets angry and garbs the Zop Mob's collar and asks him that where did they take his parents? Due to the power of J. Eek, the Zop Mob dies and explodes. The black ink gets all over him, but he is upset as he didn't get all of his answers. At that time, another Zop Mob appears and J. Eek quickly uses his telekinesis powers and takes control over the Zop Mob's body. He angrily asked the Zop Mob that Ho staged this kidnapping. The Zop Mob replies that they are demons and they won't sell their own kind. Hearing this, J.A. Ike asked him that if Scalpel has sent them, the Zop Mob replies that he won't tell him. After that, J.A. Ike throws his school bag and gives some options and asked the Zop Mob that who sent him. The Zop Mob then finally tells J.A.I. Key that Scalpel is the one. Hearing this, J. Ick gets more angry as he feels that Scalpel has betrayed him and how dare he touches his family. Out of anger, J. Ike garbs the neck of Zop Mob and kills it. J. Ike gets that he failed to control his power, and his eyes are glowing. After that, he clams down a bit and adjusts his glasses and remembers that he forget to ask where they took his mom and dad. J. Ick then starts to search for any other left over Zop Mobs. We can see that there is one Zop Mob still hiding. This is the Zop Mob that runs away from J. Ike before. J. Ike uses his powers and find the last Zop Mob. He uses telekinesis and drags the Zop Mob in front of him. J. Ike then wipes his face with a napkin and tells the Zop Mob to tell him that where did they took his parents or else he will see a bloodbath. The Zop Mob starts to sweet out of fear and he shows J. Ike the location on his phone. J. Ike watched the location carefully and he again gets angry and starts to radiate his immense power as he shouts his aura outbursts and from that alone the Zop Mob gets killed. After that, we can see in a ruined building, J. Ike's parents are held captive. It. We can see that Ushi Jim and his team is also there. J. Ike's mom and dad tells Jim to quickly kill them. Because as they die, they will be able to leave this human world. As they are happily fantasizing their dead, at that time, J. Ike comes there to save them.
Seeing Jay Ek, both his parents gets upset behind them. Scalpel is watching this as he says that everything is going as planned. Azracel is also watching this with Scalpel. Scalpel says that Azracel's prediction is impressive as Jay Ike comes so quickly to rescue his parents. It's just human nature. They're wired to react quickly when their desire for revenge is triggered. Azracel tells this to Scalpel. He also further praises Scalpel for involving a human in this. Scalpel replies to Azracel that he is a demon, and there's no way he can be seen receiving orders from an angel in the eyes of others, and that's why he has done this kidnapping using a human. So you've handed the contract to a subcontractor? Azracel asked. Scalpel replies that it's more about the redistribution of labor. Saying this, Scalpel uses his magic to control Yimp and tells him that he is the master of evil deeds. Yimp cannot resist the power to Scalpel, and so his mind gets controlled. On the other hand, Jayak starts to walk towards his parents. He has a very serious look. As he steps on the ground, a pale green hand comes out of the ground and garbs Jay Eek's leg. Seeing this, Jay Eek gets scared and he starts to drag his leg. As he drags his leg, a green monster comes out of the ground. After that, the same species of monster starts to come out of the ground like mummies. Seeing the monsters, Jay Ick gets that they are low-level mobs. The monster then launch their attacks at Jay Ick. One of the monsters jumps and holds Jay Ick from behind. Seeing this, all the other monsters also jump towards Jay Ick. Jay Ick panics a bit as he slaps the monster on his back. It instantly gets killed and explodes and black ink gets spread on his shoulder. As Jay Ick looks in front, he sees that a monster has come close to his face and is about to bite him. Jay Ike responds quickly and slaps the monster, saying that its breath stings. As the slap hits, the monster explodes immediately. Seeing the power of Jay, Ike, the other monsters get scared and starts to sweet. Now Jay, Ike, raises his leg, and the monster that was holding his leg gets dragged out of the ground and flies high on the sky. As the monster is about to fall on Jay, Ike's head, Jay, Ike clap his hands and kills the monster like we kill mosquitoes. As the monster explodes, Balk Ink overs J. Ike's face and hands. Oh, disgusting! J. Ike then looks in front and sees that a whole lot of monsters are crawling out of the ground. As Russell and Scalpel is watching is seen from behind a glass room. Seeing this, As Russell tells Scalpel that this mobs are too easy for J. Ike. Scalpel replies that, rather than a large monster loudly growling in front of you, a swarm of tiny mosquitoes, disturbing your sleep is more irritating. He also further says that J. Ick's composure sure is beyond imagination, but even for the apex hybrid faced with the swarm of mosquitoes, one can't help but feel anger. On the other hand, J. Ick is kill all the monster easily. He gives a row of slaps and kills tons of the monsters. J. Ick also uses dance moves to kill the monsters. And within a few minutes, he was done killing all the monsters. Seeing this, Scalpel gets nervous. The little yimp also sees this and feels scared. The yimp realizes that kidnapping was a bad idea. And he slowly starts to get out of Scalpel mind control magic. Seeing this, Scalpel again used his magic and make Yimp totally under his control. Now the Yimp becomes totally demonic, and he laughs and tells that he will make J.I.K. have a taste of hell. Saying this, he raises J.I.K.'s parents up. J.I.K.'s mom and dad shouts out of pain. The Yimp looks at them with red eyes and says that, if things stay this way, J.I.K.'s parents will slowly die while being hung. The Yimp's subordinates get scared to see his demonic act. Jayak sees this, and he gets super angry, and out of anger, his aura starts to leak. He threatens that he will absolutely not forgive them. Seeing this, Jayak's parents shout and tells him not to come here. The subordinates of the Yimp tells him that he has gone too far. The Yimp makes a scared face and tells them, and this is the true taste of a demon. But inside, the yimp is very scared, 
and he cannot collect his thoughts because of Scalpel's magic. J. Ike looks at his parents and says that he will definitely save them. Hearing this, his parents screams and begs him not save them. Azracel is seeing this, and after a while he asked Scalpel that if this is his last card. Scalpel panics a bit and says that he is sure that J. Ike's anger will explode and unleash more awakening. Azracel then turns around and says that if a more life-threatening monster attacked the hanging parents, it would be more effective. Hearing this scalpel, things that this is a brilliant idea, he also questioned Azracel that how did HR come up with such a plan? He would even put Satan to shame. And where do these demonic ideas come from? Azracel tells Scalpel to shut up, and his gauge is going down. After that, Scalpel uses his summoning magic and summons the man-eating monster Tremos. After that, a giant centipede-like monster comes out of the ground. The monster has a huge mouth with tons of sharp, pointed teeth. The monster is about to eat J. Ike's parents. J. Ike's parents sees this and feels happy as they think that this is the bus that will take them to their home. The monster opens his mouth widen and rushed to eat them. Seeing this, J. I. Key starts to run at full speed. Seeing him running, his parents gets upset and tells him not to approach them. J. Ike ignores their screams and jumps towards the mouth of the monster. He jumps and gets inside the monster's mouth. Seeing this, his parents get shocked. The monster closes its mouth and tries to swallow J. Ike. After a while, the monster starts to shake, and its mouth bursts open. Jayek's mom sees this and gets afraid. After that, we can see Jayek is completely fine. He is covered in saliva, and he is holding the mouth of the monster. Open Jayek then looks at his mom and dad and tells them to clock out. Hearing this, his mom and dad gets confused. On the other hand, Azracel and Scalpel is also nervous to hear this. After that, we can see Angel Henael in Heaven's Paradise, special prison. She is chilling in a pool. While she is sitting on a chair, at that time, a bald waiter comes to her with a plate of food and says that this salad, made with a base of romaine lettuce, avocado, and arugula, is served with a two-plus-grade sirloin steak. As Henael sees this, she tells the waiter that she didn't order anything. The waiter stands still without saying a word. Henael seems a bit troubled. She asks the waiter that if she can't stop eating. Now the waiter replies that that's not an option. The waiter also says that she is currently in a state of excessive happiness. Hence, stopping is out of the question. The punishment that Henael has received is to eat without stopping. As the bald waiter finishes his words, his head shines brightly and it hurts Henael's eyes. So she turns around and thinks that, if she continue to stay here, she won't just fail to protect J. Ick, but she will also become morbidly obese. After that, Henael tears a strand of hair, and as the bald waiter is about to leave, she calls him and shows him that there is a hair in her food. Seeing this, the waiter gets shocked, and he takes the plate and goes to the other waiters and starts to scold them. At that time, Henael takes a cloth and wraps it around her shoulder and starts to escape from this place. As she is about to escape, she sees that the whole place is sealed with a barrier. She then asked God for forgiveness, and after that, her hand starts to shine. Later, a yellow color sharp thing comes on her hand, and with that, she cuts the barrier smoothly. After that, she spreads her blue wings and gets out of that place at full speed. On that other side, we can see Jayek's mom and dad ask Jayek that, what does he mean by clock out? Jayek gives a deadly look and replies that, it's time for them to stop living this life and go back. He also says that it seems like dangerous situations keep arising because of him, and he has given it a lot of thought that holding on to his parents any longer is nothing but his selfishness. He then thank his parents for being there for him for the past 19 years, and the best way he can repay them is by setting them free. After that, J. Ick smiles brightly and tells them thanks for being his parents all this while. Hearing this, J. Ick's parents starts to cry. 
Seeing this, Jayak requests them to disappear from his sight and go back to their home. Seeing this, Scalpel thinks of Jayak as a dutiful son. Azrasel also thinks that Jayak is an angel that he is giving a painless death to his parents. Jayak then opens the monster's mouth widen and tells his parents to slide down and they will reach the afterlife in no time. The little yimp is holding the ropes and he feels guilty for doing these things to such a peaceful family. But due to Scalpel's demon pepper, he is unable to express his real intentions. Yimp thinks that after he escaped from this demon whispers, he will live a life of repentance. At that time, the demon whispers activates and the yimp crises and unwilling says to Jayak that he will not escape from his grasp. J.I.K.'s mom starts to think, and after a while she speaks up and says that she has decided. His dad also says the same. J.I.K.'s dad then shouts and says, J.I.K., you are the child born from my heart. No matter what anyone says, you are my son. I'll work overtime forever. No, I'll live with you. J.I.K.'s mom also says that if he is okay with a mother like her, she also want to remain as his mother. Jayak gets confused and asks them that what they means. His parents replies that they want to remain as his parents. Hearing this, J.E. Key gets emotional, and he also smiles brightly. Seeing this emotional scene, the yimp cries heavily. After that, J.E. gets serious and says that it's time for retribution. Saying this, he breaks all the teeth of the monster and jumps from its mouth and lands on the ground. He then looks at the monster with his deadly eyes and says that how dare it tries to prey on his family, saying he punched the monster. Getting hit, the monster starts to vomit. Black ink from its mouth, J-A-I-K, punches continuously, and the monster vomits the black liquid. The monster starts to shake, but J-A-I-K anger was at his peak. He didn't stop his punches. After a while, he launched a powerful blow, and the monster gets pushed back. He then uses his agility and punched the monster from all sides. Seeing this scene, Scalpel and Azrasel gets nervous, as they cannot fathom how strong Jayik really is. After taking all the punches, the monster is on his dead bed. It starts to fall on the ground. Seeing this, Jayik stops and tells them not to belittle his family ever again. After that, Jayik looks at the yimp. The yimp gets scared from his glare. But due to the effects of demon whispers, he speaks up and says to Jayik that he is not scared of him. As the monster falls on the ground, Jayik starts to walk towards the yimp and says that the mastermind behind this kidnapping must face the consequences of his wicked actions. Hearing this, the yimp and his subordinates starts to shake. The yimp's subordinates tells him that this is the end of their carrier. The yimp replies that this time he really regret it, and if he survives today, he will stop all his bad works. At that time, Azrasel comes behind the yimp and says, Don't be scared. I'll transfer a strong power to you, so fight against him. Saying this, Azrasel put his hand on the yimp's shoulder and starts to transfer his powers. He then tells the yimp that, with the power from Scalpel combined with his, he can certainly match up to J. Ike. As the blue aura cover the yimp's body, he feels that he is becoming overwhelming strong. As Azrasel performs this act, his gauge meter starts to go down. It is about to enter the red area. After the power transfer is over, the yimp gets in front of J. Ick at super fast speed. J. Ick gets shocked to see this. The yimp changes completely. He gets a red iron on his arm. In his head, there are little horns. He radiates blue aura, and his face has become much handsome. He says that he has never experienced this kind of power. J.I.K. looks serious and says that it's noisy. He also increases his aura and his eyes glows green. He tells the yimp that he has to face the consequences of his sin. Saying this, J.I.K. throws a punch at the yimp. The yimp dodges it easily. J.I.K. punch another time, but this time also, the yimp dodges it. He also mocks J.I.K., saying that he is not that much powerful. Now J.I.K. gets angry, and he throws a powerful punch, and lucky this time, 
the punch directly hit on the yimp's stomach. Getting hit, the yimp vomits blood, and he flies away and hits a wall and gets unconscious. The collision was so power that it leaves a huge dent on the wall. Seeing this, Azra Sel gets behind J. Ick and tells him that he has something to say to him. He tells J. Ick that he left his door open when he came here, so he closed it to prevent any potential theft. Hearing this, J. Ick thanks him. Azra Sel now looks at the gauge and sees that the meter has turned to blue again. After that, he keeps the gauge in his pocket and goes towards the yimp. He now transfer more power to the yimp. As the power gets transferred, the yimp gets up and says that he feels that his strength has gone up by twice. The yimp rushed towards J.I.K. at lightning speed and punched on his chin. As the punch lands, J.I.K.'s chin gets cut and starts to bleed. J.I.K.'s mom and dad is still hanging, and now they are feeling very hungry.